Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. And now, Andrew continues teaching from the life-changing Word of God about making sense. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today we're doing another series of special programs with the CEO of Andrew Womack Ministries, Paul Milligan. And boy, he's been a blessing to me. And I was listening to his teaching back in the month of June, and he made some statements about 71% of people living from paycheck to paycheck, even people that made over $100,000 a year, and about all kinds of things. Here's some statistics that the average person in the U.S. has $16,425 in credit card debt. The average mortgage is $180,000. The average auto loan is $29,000. Student loans average $50,868 per person. Any type of debt, just the average person in the United States is in debt, $135,924. And I tell you, there is a tremendous amount of money that goes towards interest that we could have in our pocket and that we could be using to build the kingdom and to do all kinds of things. This is just not good, and yet I think that the average American just embraces this as, well, this is normal. Right. This is average, but it's not what the Word of God teaches. No, I don't believe it is, and I, and I think uh, our li people's lives are, are a good example of this, mine and yours both. We've both not lived in that, in that environment. You know, um, we, we, in the last show, you were talking about needs. And one of the things that I think uh, is difficult is that w when we have needs, financial needs especially, there's this anxiety. And I think this comes from the curse. If we could go back to the garden for just a moment. When Adam and Eve uh, sinned, they got the curse that, that came with that. And part of that curse was they were no longer, you know, the provision that God had for them was not going to be easy. It was going to be by the sweat of their brow. They were going to have to work for it. They were going to have, there was just anxiety in, uh, in, in, in getting their needs met. Well, people still live that way today. And it's nobody's it's not necessary because Jesus came 2,000 years ago and he got back what Adam lost. It's like the burden was put on our shoulders. We had to produce, but originally God provided everything yeah. and we can get back to that. Yes, I mean, Adam and Eve before they sinned had no thought about provision. It's kind of like, it's kind of like a child. You know, when my children were three, four and five years old, they didn't, get, they didn't come to me and, you know, and say, Dad, you know, do, we have, do we have enough food for breakfast in the morning? Are we going to have enough? You know, there's a childlike provision, uh, and, and God, that's what God did for Adam and Eve. But once they fell, then they had to figure out how to provide, and they had to overcome the curse. People are still doing that. Well, Paul, there's people watching us right now that say, but that's the way that it is. If yes. I don't take care of me, who will? Yes. How do you respond well, to well, that? Well, the way I respond to that is that, that the covenant that we're under, if you're born again and filled with the Spirit of God, then what Jesus did 2,000 years ago solves that problem. Here's the, here's the key. God's grace has provided prosperity for you and me. It's, it's, it's taken us back to what happened to Adam and Eve in the beginning. We have that same thing that we have access to. We just have to access it by faith. I bet you there's a lot of people watching this that would disagree with that statement. How do you prove that God has provided prosperity for us? A lot of people would say that's not that's true. Right. There's, there's a lot of Christians who are poor. It's not part of our atonement. Right. I believe it is. I believe the how word. Do you, how do you prove it? I believe the word of God is how it, it, where it's is my that? basis. <laughs> I'm putting you're, you on the. You, you are. Let me use Second Corinthians chapter nine. Well, I, that we can chapter eight, that. verse nine says, "For uh, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you through his poverty might be made rich." Jesus died to produce. Prosperity, And some people will say, that's not talking about money. That's talking about emotions. That's talking about health or something else. But if you take every verse in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, Amen. every right. verse is talking about money. The entire context is money. Yeah. That, that is correct. So I believe it is part of our atonement that Jesus died to produce financial prosperity. I believe He did. It, look, it, if G, when Jesus died on the cross, if He didn't get back everything Adam lost, then the Word of God is not true. And I mean, He didn't it, totally save us. He didn't save us. There, there, if, you, if you've got a problem with that portion of it, you're going to have to have a problem with a whole lot of other things, like our salvation, healing, and other things. 
but religion has departmentalized what Jesus has done. So it's only for spiritual things yeah. take place in eternity. But the truth is that Jesus, it, Galatians 1, 4, He came to deliver us from this present evil world, not yeah. just the one to come, but the present evil world. Yes, and I believe the enemy, you know, he, he works overtime to stop prosperity in our lives because he knows that if God's people are prosperous, we'll have an impact on this world. You know, I, your ministry is impacting the world, the four corners of the earth. And I could talk about that for three hours, which we don't have. Mm -hmm. But that's done with money. And some people, you, you know, they, they don't like the fact that it takes money to do these kind of things. And I like to tell people, look, you're going to have a relationship with money, good or bad. Just try to have the relationship that the Word says we need to have right. with, with money. But m God has chosen money. It's a tool. It's a tool that we use to get, to get the gospel out. And that's the way I stay on track with money. Deuteronomy at chapter 8 says that, that uh, the purpose of money is to establish God's covenant in the earth. And, God, and that means a lot of things, but it certainly means spreading the gospel. And that's what you do with money. All the money that comes in here, we try to be good stewards over to get the gospel out. You know, I just was given a chipper for my birthday. And uh, that costs money. And I could take all of the limbs, all of the trees that have fallen on my property, and I could use a little ax, and I could chip every one by hand. But I guarantee you, it'd take me forever. This chipper, I just stick things up to five and a quarter inches in there, and it just chips it and throws it out. That's what money is. Money is a tool. Money itself is not the thing, but money empowers us to be able to do things. This ministry could not do what we're doing. You couldn't do what you have done. All of these testimonies that I've heard you give, you couldn't do if you were a poor man. Yes. And, you know, I've ne you know, and I don't mean this to condemn anybody who's poor, but I've never been blessed financially by a poor person. I mean, I, God blesses us so that we can be a blessing. Thank God for people who are prosperous mm -hmm. because they help so, so many people. And this ministry does that. We, we help people all over the world. But Christians really do have kind of a mindset that it, to be godly is to be poor. I don't know how that happened in the body of Christ. But there's people, I remember a guy that came to our church and he lived in his... Um, station wagon, he and his wife, and they each owned one, two suits and two dresses, and they would wear one and wash out the other at night, and they would sleep in the back of their thing. And they were presented by our Baptist churches. Aren't these people so godly? They're giving their life in service to the Lord. And I, I just think that's a terrible witness. I do too. I mean, you got to think it's right. I don't think they probably weren't blessing a whole lot of folks. <laughs> no. With, with, by, by living that way. And that's not to condemn them. I'm sure that their heart might have been good, but that Man, God is El Shaddai, not El Chipo. Exactly. And you know, another, another thing that's really important is, you know, people have needs. That's real. Needs are real. And so what should you do when you have a need? What should be the way you think? And how should you understand God's Word? Well, I believe that there are, there's more than one supply. Now, this sounds strange to people, but the world has a supply. Uh, you, you, you know, especially before the last financial crisis, if you could walk into a bank, stand up and breathe, they'd loan you money. I mean, you, you can borrow money and, and many, you can get a credit card. It's the simplest thing in the world to do. So the world has a supply. The devil has a supply, if you will. And, and so what I believe God intends, he wants those needs to lead us to the right supply, which is his supply, which is not debt, which is not borrowing money, which is not going into bondage, which is not be, being uh, ruled by, by the world system. And so needs should just be stepping stones to get to God's supply. And we get back to what Adam lost in the garden and we're prosperous. Okay, so this is our third day on this, and I keep getting you off into the philosophical or the big picture, which is where I live. That's what I teach is people, what, you know, what the Bible says. But you've got very specific stuff to tell people how to manage the money that they've got, and regardless of where they are, how to start getting out of debt and start building a wealth stream towards them. So yes, why don't yes. you get into some of the nuts and the bolts? We'll get into some of it, but again, I want to make the point that, the, that there's a tremendous amount of detail in the making sense. And also, I also want to encourage people, the Basic Sense product, which is the software, we're giving that to them free for six months. It's web-based. So there's a subscription at the end. It's, not, it's just a nominal amount. But for the first six months, it's going to be free. So let me start by saying this. Uh, let, let's start with people's income. Okay? And we've already talked about how people can change the way they think about their income. But when, when it comes to stewarding your money, I think the first thing 
that has to be thought about is giving, tithing. That is, that is, there's nothing more important to do with your money until you give. It's first fruits that, that, that go to God. So that is, and you made this point in the first program, that is stewardship. Stewardship is giving. So once, once we make this decision, here's the way I say it. You pay God, you pay yourself, and you pay everybody else. And, and here, here's what I find. I bet is you true. most people would disagree with that. They would. You yeah, know, here's what that's they, not the right order. No. You know, and, and we could talk about different orders, but most Christians, I mean, a lot of Christians you and I know, they pay God, they give, um, but they don't pay themselves. Yeah. They just pay everybody else. And so, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I don't understand the saving part. Because when I say pay yourself, that's what I mean. I mean, save money, put money aside, retirement, investment, other things like that. That's, I would guess that the majority of people would say, no, you have to pay your bills before you start saving it. Right, exactly. So explain that. And so when people, when people hear this teaching, see, the problem is that they've got their finances out of order. So they can't see a pathway to what I'm saying because they've already got themselves in, in trouble. And so this is why I, we teach about the fast track way of getting out of debt. <clears throat> and look, if you, if you find yourself in a position where your income is more than, I mean, your outgo is more than your income, then you have to make adjustments. I mean, there, some of these are tough decisions. When you've got things out of order, you've got to make some tough decisions. You, look, I know people who have taken this so seriously, this teaching, they'll sell their house and downsize. I know this is going to sound crazy to people, but they rearrange their spending to match God's Word. Absolutely. And it, you say, well, that's so painful. Yes, it may be. Yeah, to but your I flesh. mean, if I can think of a student that came and they saw us who were prospering. We talk about that we don't owe anybody. We pay cash for our cars. And so they just thought, well, God loves me the way that he loves Andrew. And so they went out and got a 50, I mean, a 5,000 something dollar square foot house and they had no income and stuff and they got in trouble and actually had to quit school. Now they were able to recover and come back, but they had to downsize. Right. They have to live within those means. And there's a lot of people watching this that know I can get it on credit and push the payment. This is what our government does. Exactly. We're kicking the can down the road. We got so much indebtedness, it'd take forever to pay it off. Yeah, and there's, there's a day of reconciliation for that. And it's a lot more unpleasant than making adjustments now. And so when, when we look, if, if people find themselves in a mess like that, where they, they can't do it God's way, they think they can't do it God's way because of the situation they're in, then what I, what I really strongly suggest is you've got to sit down and make adjustments. This is not rocket science. You look at where you're spending money and you adjust it to match your income. But you, people will say, well, then I don't have the money to give, so I'll stop giving until I get out of debt. No, mm -hmm. no, no, no. You just, you just canceled all the, the good that's going to come from everything you do with your debt. And so that's why we say the first priority is giving. You give and you tithe. And then the second priority is to pay yourself. Now, this one is tough for people. And, and this is what I tell them. Look, the, the, the guideline, I believe, should be 10%. And there's no magic to that. I don't, that's not out of the word. I don't see in the word that you save 10%. It, but it matches the amount you give to God as a 10, most people believe 10%. So it's just a place to start. It's a guideline. But if, if you have 5%, if you have 2%, the key is to start somewhere. Start doing it. And we'll show this later in the software how this works. But those three things, I believe, have to be in order. You've got to pay God. You've got to pay yourself through saving and, and those kinds of things. And then, of course, you have obligations and bills. And, you know, I emphasize paying God probably more than <clears throat> what I emphasize the part that you're talking about, just using management and stewarding your money. But this is essential because you need God to get involved in this process. This is not just a mechanical thing. It operates off of faith. And if a person isn't trusting God and isn't doing what the Word of God says about giving first to the kingdom of God and stuff, it's going to hamper all of these other things you've got to say. You so know, that is really essential. It, it is essential. And I believe, you know, uh, people say, well, where, where does this, where does the scripture talk about these things? Well, you know, there's both in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. In the Old Covenant, Leviticus 25, for instance, God says what He's doing is He's teaching the children of Israel about stewardship. In, in that case, stewarding the land. And He told them, for six years you're going to work the land, you're going to, you're going to harvest the, 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 the crops, but in the seventh year I want you to leave the land life fallow. That's simply stewardship. 
Now think about this. If God created the earth and he thinks it's necessary that the land lie fallow, that, that's a stewardship mindset. Why could God just use his miraculous power and, and, and let them go on through the seventh year? Because, because I believe that it's part of the character of God. Stewardship is part of his character. It's righteous. It's the right thing to do. And so he's teaching the children of Israel about this. And he tells them, he says, let the land lie fallow in the seventh year. And then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to command a blessing on what you set your hand to and on your storehouse. Now watch this, your storehouse. How in the world is God going to command a blessing on something you don't have? Your storehouse is your savings. A hundred times zero, zero. Exactly. Yes, a big zero. And so what God was saying to them was, this is how God, He loves us so much. This was the motivation. If you leave the land life fallow in the seventh year, then I'm going to, I'm going to command a blessing and it, in the sixth year it'll produce enough for three years. I call it the triple commanded blessing. Mm -hmm. And so this is how important stewardship is. You get God's triple commanded blessing. And we can bring this into the new covenant with many examples. And we, and, you know, I don't know for time's sake whether we have time to do that. But you know, the, the Bible, I mean, in the new covenant, Jesus starts talking about free enterprise. He starts talking about business where he, where he talks about the, the talents, the parable of the talents. And basically Jesus is, there's, there's a good point there because Jesus is basically saying in that, in that parable, to he who has more will be given. And that's totally contrary to the world system. You know, the, here's the way the government looks at it, to more who has, take it away from him and give it to somebody that doesn't have. But that's not what the Word of God teaches. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. But you know, the scripture says that you have to put first the kingdom of God. It calls it the first fruits, not the leftover fruits. This really has to be the beginning place. And I think that it's the reason God set it up this way is because we spend more time working than we spend going to church, than we spend in devotions, than we spend doing just about anything. We spend more time working. And for us to have a secular part of our life that this is just us over here, but then here's our spiritual life. God hates that. He wants to be involved in the thing that occupies the most of our time. And how does he do that? Yes. We give him the first 10%. And by doing that, we have brought God into this thing. Because if there wasn't a God who promised that he would give you a triple blessing, that he would multiply the seed sown, well then here's your goal and here you are. And if you take part of what you've got and give it away, you're moving away from your goal instead of towards it, unless there is faith involved. So giving makes us uh, depend upon God. It's the only reason it makes sense. And it does, and, and it also shows that we love God because money, you said it, you know, <clears throat> you spend, if you spend 40 hours a week of your life to make money, you're giving God a portion of your life. Then you're really coming into covenant with God. And, and I believe that's love. I believe to give in the way God teaches us to give is a demonstration of God's love in our life. And, it, and if the world sees that, it affects them. I have this happen to me all the time because you, you've been with me. I'll go in places and just you know, buy people's dinners and restaurants. You've bought the entire restaurants. <laughs> now, I remember one story you gave about going in and the waitress, you just felt like God wanted you to do something and you wound up paying her mortgage. Yep, you know, you know why? Because she, when I walked in there, God told me, he said, boy, she's, there's really some problems in her life. Her son had just been killed in Iraq and they just had his funeral and I could go on, but she'd lost her husband the year before, just all these things. And so we ministered the gospel to her first, but she was about to lose her home. I mean, so those opportunities, how do you... You couldn't have done that if you hadn't been prosperous. If you no. hadn't have taken the things that we're trying to encourage people to do, Paul, you could have loved that woman. You could have prayed for her. You should have, could have showed her compassion and she still would have lost her house. Yeah, and you're making the point that I think is extremely important. Here's what, here's what I believe really impacts people uh, to see God for who He really is, is when we demonstrate His love. Not just talk about it, you know, I'm going to pray for you, brother, be warmed and filled. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, there, there's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm not condemning people who pray for people who have problems. That's, that's good and that's fine. But when you demonstrate God's love, man, that impact, I guarantee you, even to what she did, I didn't, she chased me out in the parking lot. I couldn't get away. I mean, she, she grabbed me and she was so thankful and praising God. And, and so it, it has this huge impact on people, but we can't do those kind of things if we're not prosperous. We can't and you know, some people will say, but this is an American gospel. It won't work other places. You and I were just in Uganda where we have drilled 11 water wells for people. We went there and we've got some footage of all of that, us eating uh, 
ants, termites, white ants, termites. 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 Yeah, white ants. They call them white ants. And uh, anyway, it has not only changed their lives and changed their health, but one guy has been so prosperous because now we've taught him how to service these wells and he's servicing other people's wells. He's been able to build, buy a motorcycle and he's traveling and working and it's changing the economy. It'll work anywhere in the world because it's not an American gospel. This is what the Word of God teaches right. and it'll work. It's the gospel. And that's, I'm glad you brought that up about Uganda because there's an example of, you know, God has really given us an opportunity there. These villages out in Karamoja, poverty don't even describe it. These people, you know, is, if you really understand the way they've had to live, they have no future. Mm -hmm. They're they're just consumed with their present, surviving today, getting enough food. You and I talked to a, a little tiny woman who had to walk eight hours to get water to the mountains and come back. And she described, she told us this story about, you know, hitting the water pot on a tree and spilling it and had to go all the way back to the mountain. These people's lives, so they don't think about the future. They don't think about prosperity. They don't think about God. I mean, they don't think about nothing but just eating. But we started survive. teaching them these exact same things. They now have a box, a community bank. They have planted crops. They've been just eating ants and whatever they could. They eat twigs. Twigs. They, they leaves. eat leaves. Yeah. And now they have actually planted crops and they have crops growing that are going to give them a food source they've never had and an ability to sell it and make money that they've never had. Yes. And you know, one of the things we've done, we, we have a, a young man that, that works for the ministry on the ground there. His name is Ricky Burrs. And Ricky is the guy that's going out and discipling these people, teaching them how to do this. We don't just give them the ability to do this and then disappear. Make Ricky, them dependent upon us make, and yeah. they have to come back and do it. Ricky goes out and, you know, he taught this one village you and I are in. They've got two acres that they've been able to plant crops on. And Ricky showed them how to, you know, they use what they need and then they take the rest to market. Mm -hmm. And then they've got this box, as you were describing, this green box, this is Andrew Womack Ministries, on the top of it, and it's chained to a tree. Yep. That's this, that's the, it's the savings and loan bank, if you will. It's mm -hmm. the bank and the, and so they bring their money and they put it in that strong box. And so they're saving, they're doing what we're set, pay God, pay yourself, pay everybody else. But you know, even in those remote places, we found out that they have money. Yeah. And we, I was shocked to find this out. I mean, many of them don't wear clothes. They had to tell the people to put the clothes on because <laughs> we were coming. And they, they live primitive the way that they were a thousand years ago, but they had money, but they would just blow it. Now we're teaching them how to pay themselves, how to give. They're building a church in these places and we are teaching them the exact same principles. And if it'll work in the backwoods of Uganda, it'll work in America or wherever you are. And I'll tell you this, this is important. We're just about out of time. Real quickly yeah, advertise this. Yeah, our Making Sense teaching, six, seven hours of teaching on all these subjects that Andrew and I are talking about, along with Basic Sense, uh, which, is a, which is software, a web-based software you subscribe to. We're giving you six months free. We'll be demonstrating some of this software later. This, this will really help you. And so we would encourage you to get that. Also, I'm going to be making my book available. This is primarily about your giving, putting God first, seeking first the kingdom of God. And as you do this, God will prosper you. So this is about putting faith in the Lord and demonstrating that faith by your giving. Paul will give you the actual nuts and bolts about how do you deal with debt? How do you get out of this debt? How do you do these things? And I think together it'll be a great package. So listen to our announcer as he gives you this information and please call or write today, receive the materials and then listen again tomorrow as we continue interviewing Paul Milligan. Since the filming of these programs, the Making Sense teachings on the USB drive have been updated. This update includes changing the name to Basic Sense. The updated Basic Sense financial teaching from Paul Milligan is available in audio and video teachings on a USB drive. When you order this teaching, you'll also receive instructions to register for six months of free access to the online money management program, also titled Basic Sense. The Basic Sense online money management program will help you eliminate debt establish a spending plan, and develop a monthly spending report. With this tool, you can become debt-free. Most can experience financial freedom in just seven years. Make sense of your finances and contact us today to order Basic Sense for just $149. Or for just $20 more, you can get the Basic Sense package. 
This package includes the Basic Sense USB teaching with six months of free access to the Basic Sense online money management program, along with two of Andrew's books, Financial Stewardship and Living in God's Best, as well as Andrew's teaching titled, What's in Your Hand on CD and DVD. This package has a catalog value of $200.99, but you can get it today for just $169. Make sure to get the Basic Sense package when you contact us today. You can order resources or become a Grace Partner by visiting our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download many free resources. Or call our helpline Monday through Friday from 4.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time. Our number is 719-635-1111. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. True Christianity isn't about what you do to make God move. True Christianity is all a response to what God has already provided. It's already a done deal. Amen. His message of grace, his message of faith um, has been absolutely life changing for me. Grace has spoken to you and says you are clean from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You are my righteousness. Faith responds and says, thank you. I receive my cleansing. Encounter the Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack and Jeremy Pearsons at the Phoenix Gospel Truth Conference, January 4th through 6th, 2018. For more information, visit our website or call 719-635-1111. I am really excited to share with you something that we've never done before. This is an 800-page book that I've put out studying verse by verse through the book of Proverbs. And this is a whole set that goes along with it. We've got this little uh, cover right here that says Proverbs, uh, uh, teaching, timeless teaching for a life of blessing. And then we've got this little notepad that goes with it. All of this was engraved by my son that was raised from the dead. He does this for a living. And we wanted to advertise this because I'm gonna start teaching verse by verse through the book of Proverbs on our television program and we would like to encourage you to write in and get this material in advance so that as I study through this, you will be able to follow me. Listen to our announcer and he'll give you more information. You can get this Proverbs gift box, which also includes Andrew's book on Proverbs, the Leatherbound Journal, as well as a pen so you can chronicle your journey as you study through Proverbs with Andrew. The Proverbs gift box is also a great idea for friends and family. Contact us today to order the Proverbs gift box for yourself or someone you care about. The ministry training program is designed to help Karis Bible graduates identify and be equipped in their calling in one of our seven distinctive schools and our leadership program. The Karis Bible College Business School exists to instill sound business principles in the body of Christ and populate the body and the marketplace with effective, well-financed ministry. For more information, visit charisbiblecollege.org.